What is the most statistically improbable thing that has happened to you? Before cell phones, when I was a kid getting a haircut, the barber shop's phone rang. The receptionist answered it and said just a second, I'll check. Then she asked if anyone in the shop was named Ariotto, so I took the phone, had to stick my arm out through the cape, and it was my cousin, who asked if she could come over and play. She was confused when I told her I was at the barber shop. It turned out the phone number there was only different from my home number by one digit. TL. DR. Someone called me, dialed wrong, and I happened to be at the place they dialed. That is really freaking weird. This happened last year to my cousin, who lives in Southern California. He has a young grandchild. He was talking with his daughter about different books to get for his granddaughter, and he fondly recalled some particular picture book that he had as a child. So he went on Amazon, and found a used copy from a third party retailer for a couple of bucks. When the book arrived, he opened the cover and saw his own name written on the inside cover, in childish handwriting. He looked at the return address of the seller, and it was in Saint Louis, but he had grown up decades ago in Atlanta. I got the same $5 bill back for change at a frozen yogurt place a week later and thought that was cool, but dang. I found a rock in the woods with my name painted on the back of it. I remembered painting it as a really young child. I don't know how the frick it got into the woods, or why out of all the rocks I was walking through that one caught my eye enough to check it out, as it was painted side down when I picked it up. It was a very surreal experience. This kind of stuff I think can be attributed to how subconscious thought works. You didn't know it but you actually recognized that same rock from years and years ago and picked it up. Mum died in 06. She was the first of 18 people to die in our family that year. I'm happy to report that I am doing a lot better, though I'm a wee bit superstitiously worried about 16 coming up. As far as mom replacements go, my aunt was the best possible person to take me in. I really appreciate everyone's comments and upvotes. It's amazing to know I touched 436 oh wait now it's 600 people enough to either leave a thoughtful comment or click the orange arrow. Yeah you are the sweetest. Frick that is crazy. I am so sorry. I was in a statistics class and we had to flip a coin till we got heads 3 times it took me 24 tries the probability of that is almost 0. Also in case anyone was wondering the odds are 23C2X0.5 circumflex 25 equals 253x 0.5 circumflex 25 equals 0.0000075399 equals 7.5x 10 minus 4 percent standard form for science students this is the equivalent of you winning a lottery with just over 132,600 people i've edited the numbers for corrections people have suggested some people must be wondering how i got that number on the 24 bought two used cars and both had the same indie band cd they were not bought on a dealership and there was a two-year gap between each purchase sounds like that band is getting too mainstream i was struck by lightning it's a really cool experience even though the amount of o3 generated made it smell really strange i bought a lotto ticket afterwards and i did not win i really did not expect much from this for those interested, do a search on Roy Sullivan, known as the Human Lightning Conductor. It's a fascinating read. You survived a lightning strike. Save your money, your good luck is on E. Back when soda bottles actually had instant wins instead of having to go online and enter a code, I got one from a gas station and immediately opened it after purchase at the counter. One another free, so I went back and got that. It was slow, so I was joking with the cashier about the odds of that one being a winner too, so I opened it just to check, and sure enough, it was another free bottle. Went back and got a third soda, opened it, another free soda. Sadly number 4 was not a winner, but I was good on soda for the rest of the week. I'm an identical twin. One day I'm in my home reading the IMDB page for the King of Queens. I check out the trivia and among many other things read that the guy who played Doug's friend Richie left the show to do a pilot for another show. As I'm reading this I get a call from my twin brother who asked me if I knew that the guy who played Richie in the King of Queens left the show to do his own pilot. I asked him how he knew that he said he was currently on their IMDB trivia page. That's freaking intense. 
I grew up in South Florida, B1988, and moved to London in 2012. In 2013, I met a woman who was involved as a professional musician in a project I was doing. I am a composer. After the workshop, we got to talking, and it turns out that she grew up in the same house as Emmy, even the same bedroom. Her family moved out in 1988 and sold the house to my parents that year, right when I was born. They moved to San Diego when she eventually made her way to London as a professional classical musician. I made it to London to study music, and through my conservatory, I met her entirely by chance in this random workshop. The same house. Every time I think about it, I feel like my brain actually stops. I just can't handle the statistical improbability of this. We are now friends, and her family is quite lovely, although my parents and hers never interacted outside of the homeowner transaction, 27 years ago. Anyways, it was a crazy day. Plot twist, just your sister. Before my boyfriend and I started dating, we had chatted a lot about our music tastes and the concerts we had been to. We were excited to learn that we had both been to the same concert of a fairly obscure band that had played in our city the previous winter. It was only after we became a couple that we found our old concert tickets, compared them, and discovered that not only had we attended the same night of the three night concert, I had sat directly behind him. I'm pretty sure it's just my brain fabricating memories, but I can almost recall seeing him during the concert. Either way, the fact that we had gone to the same concert and sat maybe a foot away from each other enjoying the same music, a whole year before we met and started a relationship, is a really nice coincidence. Something very similar happened to me, but on a date. The concert was about 3 months before I met her. She was sitting behind me, and I was in one of the pictures she took and had carried with her on her phone for months. Spooky. It didn't work out though. I was once on an airplane and about 20 minutes into the flight we heard a huge boom. I looked out of the window and one of the engines was on fire and there was a ton of black smoke pouring out. No one was hurt and the pilot did a great job of dumping the fuel and gliding back to the airport where we were greeted by what I assume was every fire engine in the country. I was 14, out for a bike ride with my family, heading from dinner to the ice cream place. I was coming down a hill, expecting to turn at the bottom of it. My father yelled something from behind me. I turned my head to ask him to repeat what he'd said, just as I was starting to turn. Instead of turning at the expected intersection, I instead missed and hit the curb. At my rate of speed, my front tire turned into a three-stroke four-pie shape, jammed on the forks, and sent me flying over the handlebars. I landed flat on my feet. Not a scratch. I was going uphill on my bike when I was a kid when I hit a large rock, and somehow flipped over the handlebars. I have no idea how I managed that going uphill. I landed on my feet with one tiny scratch on my finger couldn't do that again in a million years, I'd bet. I got diagnosed with a type of lymphoma, in my skull, that has only been reported 9 times previously in history. All of my doctors said that it was almost impossible for the symptoms that led to the diagnosis to be cancer, but now I'm in remission EO. Years ago, was hanging with friends, stopped for gas, came up 10 cents short for the gas we had pumped, this was in the old days, when you could pump first, then pay. Luckily, a lady on the other side of the pump was kind enough to give us 10 cents. We go about our evening, partying, having fun. Four hours later we're at a grocery store, middle of the night. At the checkout, we overhear some drama. The lady ahead of us wrote a check for her groceries, but misheard the amount, and her check was 10 cents short. What a coincidence, right? Hours earlier we were 10 cents short, now this lady is 10 cents short. We tell the cashier, hey, we'll take care of her 10 cents. And here's where it gets weird. The lady turns around to thank us. And it was the same lady from the gas station. The same one who had given us 10 cents 4 hours earlier. Cue spooky music. Some answers. I live in a big American city. Nowadays you have to pay first, then pump. Yes, we all reacted when we recognized each other. Lots of OMG type gasping, I can't believe it, now I thought it was a sign and we should all move in together, but no one else wanted to. I bought a set of Faulkner books at a charity book drive in the town where I work, I was a bit annoyed because the sound and the fury was missing, 
but it was otherwise a really nice set, and I thought I might be able to replace the missing volume from eBay. A few weeks later, I was at the used bookstore in the town where I live, when lo, a familiar red cover leapt out at me. Not only was it the sound and the fury, it was the exact missing copy, confirmed by the former owner's name stamp, found in all four volumes. I wish I could upvote more times because the sound in the fury is by far my favorite novel. I lived in Japan for a year and had no friends when I arrived. I made some friends using a free online site designed for this purpose. There was one person I had been talking with via texting and email that I had not actually met in person yet. New Year's Eve in Osaka. Near the end of the night after much bar hopping, I made friends with a random stranger. Of all the people in Osaka on that night, 2.6 million. It turned out to be the person I had been texting off and on for the past month. When we realized this it was a total holy crap moment. They were stalking you. As a younger teen, I dabbled in golfing. There was a camp and we would go once a week. On the course I was at the fairways of 5 and 6 round right next to each other except in opposite directions. As I hit my drive on the 6th, a golfer hit his on the 5th. They collided in midair knocking both our balls on our respective fairways. As a fellow golfer, this is so freaking cool. I actually won one of those McDonald's drawings as a kid. I won a bunch of Barbies. It was pretty great for a 7 year old. This reminds me of something similar that happened to me as a kid. I won a coloring contest held by a grocery store and, as a prize, got to have breakfast at the Space Needle with Bozo the Clown. But never realized how random that was until now. I went to an amusement park in 1999. Played one of those games where you shoot a basketball and if you get it in the hoop, you win a free basketball. I won the game and I remember picking out the prize ball arbitrarily just pointing to it. Fast forward to 2011 in college and I find this basketball in my attic with the name of the university I attended which is over 9 hours away from my hometown. The one time I made that shot was at the state fair, and exactly 0 of the 6 people I was there with saw me make the shot. They thought I randomly stole a Carolina Panthers basketball. In 8th grade we had to film a short movie for a class project and I filmed mine with this kid Ryan. We filmed in this hilly area that looked pretty cool. I'm horrible with directions and didn't even know how to get back to that place. I was 14 so my his parents drove us there. Fast forward to my senior year of high school and some friends and I are gonna go poke smart. My friend drives us to that exact spot, and there's another car there. Who is it? Ryan. Who I hadn't seen since 8th grade. I was reading about the album, Forever Changes by a band called Love. This was around 2007. The album was listed in several top 100 albums lists. In the top 10, I was intrigued as I had never heard of it, or them. I found that they were around in the early 60s and from the west coast of the USA. I live in the UK, in a small city that has no significance. So, I call my buddy who has a great taste in music and I say, what do you think about the love album? Forever changes? He said, do you want to go and see them later? To which I said what do you mean? And lo and behold, they were playing a tiny venue that very night in my tiny city. What are the chances of that? Low not low. I won a video camera at a Toronto Blue Jays game when I was like 9. They called my seat number out of like 50,000 seats. I once sought to mile off on a long walk home. With all the people that do drugs why don't they drop them more and secondly why don't I ever find said drop drugs? Well don't you know if 2 minutes later I look down and find a bag full of weed sitting on the ground. I reconsidered my faith for a few minutes. Best thing I can think of is, I was locking the door to my apartment and the key broke in half inside the lock. I went to Walmart to buy some pliers and I locked my keys inside my car. Eventually got my car unlocked with the help of some incredibly nice strangers. Went home, and locked my keys inside my car again. At a school fair in middle school there was a kiddie pool full of goldfish. Guess the amount and get a free goldfish. There was over a thousand and I guess the number exactly. Then, when I was scooping my prize I happened to scoop two goldfish. I named them Cleo and Patra. It got awkward when Cleo died first, leaving just Patra. My wife and I honeymooned in Seattle back in 2013. While walking out of a restaurant, 
I see my favorite high school teacher from Kansas walking into it. Small world. We're French. When I was 16 and my sister 12, my dad took us for a month in the US. We spent some time in LA, in SF, visited a bunch of national parks and ended the trip with a week in New York. My dad had booked rooms in a small hotel. Hi, we have a reservation under last name. Yeah, hi, two people, right? Uh, no, there are three of us. Oh, sorry, the ledger says two, but I'll find you an extra room, no problem. They show us the rooms. We're settling in when we hear someone knocking. My little sister opens the door. An older man and a woman stand there, mouth agape. We just were at the desk. We had a reservation for two but the guy told us we were already booked in these rooms here. I said we obviously weren't and it had to be some kind of mix up. I notice my dad has turned white. It was his dad and stepmom. His estranged dad and stepmom, whom he hadn't seen or talked to in 20 years. The hotel had two bookings under our and my paternal grandfather's his last name. One for three people and one for two. For the same seven nights, we ended up spending the week with them, reconnecting. It didn't really heal the relationship. My grandfather was not a good person, but my sister and I got to know our grandfather and step-grandmother. I was living in New York and went on vacation to the Bahamas. I met a friend during the trip from Boston. A few years later, I was walking down the street in Amsterdam and ran into the same friend. This happened when I was like 7-8. So I was playing baseball in a league called Coach Pitch. I played the pitcher position even though the opposing team's coach would pitch to them. I was probably the worst kid on the team. I couldn't throw far. I cold and catch good so it's like a filler spot. So one game I was daydreaming with my hands up in the air and all of a sudden I felt a lot of force push into my glove. Keep in mind I was in no way paying attention to the batter or the ball. Everyone was screen cheering, even the opposing team's parents. I caught a line drive of a ball that had a lot of power behind it and I wasn't even looking. So I finally looked down into my glove and noticed I caught the ball. It was so surreal. The opposing coach came up to me saying great catch. It was pretty crazy for me. I caught a bird. Mid-flight. After I told my friend I was going to catch a bird. Mid-flight. We were walking down the streets after just smoking a joint and there was this flock of small yellow and black birds in the bushes about 30 featuring ahead of us. I nonchalantly said, watch this, I'm going to Kafka bird. When we got a few feet closer, the flock of birds took wing. Flying in our general direction. One little bird ended up flying almost directly at me. At which time I flung out my hand and snatched this little bird mid-flight. I was nearly as shocked as the little guy. I gently put him down on the grass beside the road. Checked to make sure he was okay. Then watched as he took off to join his little birdie buddies. Laughter and much mirth ensues from myself and friend. While riding my motorcycle on a public roadway. At 6am. I collided with another motorcyclist. I ask other motorcyclists this question all the time, and I've never encountered a single other rider who's been in a bike on bike collision on public roads, and survived, obviously. I was born with little or no anterior pituitary gland. That is why I am short because it makes HGH. Little did I know until a few years ago that was the cause of and the solution to all my problems. In my AP bio class. There was a free response calculation that I had absolutely no idea how to do. So I just put a random decimal with practically no thought to it. The answer ended up being like 0.833. I guessed 0.833. I could guess an infinite amount of other numbers but I guess 0.833. I was so confused. I grew up in AZ. And followed some friends out to TX about 5 years ago. My friends out here mention a guy they knew in high school was coming out to visit. I knew of him, but never really met him. We get to talking about crappy jobs and he mentions being a financial aid counselor at University of Phoenix. I too was an FC. He mentions a particularly bad manager, one I recognized. Turns out that I was the guy who took his job 7 years beforehand. Could have been awkward, but neither cared because it was a terrible place to work. I too had was an FC. I was watching the support act at a Foo Fighters concert and caught a guitar picking between my fingers with my arms folded, couldn't do that again if I tried. I have three that all came from living in a van. 
climbing to around Europe. This post is going to be a little long. Apologies. Me and my van buddy go down to Spain and one evening we meet this Australian couple. One of them is trying this route that my mate is interested in and we talk a bit. We see them once more I think before we have to back to the UK for Christmas. Six weeks later we are back in Spain but a few hundred miles further south. We arrive in the afternoon after three full days of driving so just chill out. The next day as I've got my head under the bed getting my stuff my mate says the Aussies are here. They literally drove past just then. Turns out they had rented an apartment in the nearest town. We got to know them really well over the next 6 weeks or so and they let us borrow their shower. An awesome coincidence. The next one happened when we staying not too far away at a place called Cellar and my friend again saw one of our friend's ex-girlfriends and they gave us some food. Fast forward 2 months and we are in northern France now and our friend whose ex we saw walks past our van. Not as good as the first but it sort of leads on to the last one. Just after that encounter a guy who owned the car parked next to us returns from his day of climbing and asks us if we had recently spent some time at cellar. We are a bit puzzled and say we have. He laughs at us and says he thought so because he saw us months ago at cellar and he recognized our super rusty van. Hope it was worth your while reading all that crap. Getting pregnant. I'm subfertile and so is my so. We were told that we were unlikely to have children. We now have a son and a daughter through pure luck. And, yak now. They took a long time to get here but they were definitely worth the wait. I once found a gold diamond ring just laying on the ground. Left ads in the paper for a small lost item of value. Months went by and nobody was able to describe it. Sold it for $500 and bought a Game Boy Advance SP. I think I was 12. I found a loose diamond on the pavement once. Good spot. Got 500 pounds for it. One time I was flipping a quarter and accidentally flipped it really far forward instead of up. The quarter then proceeded to land in my friend's tight jeans pocket without him even noticing. It just perfectly caught the edge and slipped in. I once took my three older nephews on a hiking trip to Big Sur, California. We had a long hike ahead of us so we began to talk about our favorite movies, books, jokes, etc. I began to tell them of my favorite book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I explained the overall plot of the story and they seemed quite interested. Fast forward a few hours and we've hiked nearly 3000 feet up a series of hills. The view of the Pacific Ocean is spectacular. As we near the peak of the highest hill, I notice something stuck in a bush. As I approach the bush, I can see that the object is a weather-worn paperback book. Reaching into the bush, I retrieved the book, which has the back cover facing me, and joke that it's probably the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was. When I turned the book over to look at the cover, I had a cold chill come over me and I was truly speechless. I sat there dumbfounded for a moment since I couldn't even imagine the odds of something like that happening. Infinite improbability drive, indeed. I was scooping ice cream and I put too much force into it and the ice cream blob flew into the air about 6 inches and landed perfectly in my bowl. That was pretty crazy. A few years ago I pulled the boardwalk piece for McDonald's Monopoly. I put it in my safe in my apartment and left for vacation to New York the next day, keeping it safe until I got home to turn it in. When I returned a week later, the apartment had been robbed. Safe broken into, with about $400 and my million dollar piece gone. There was no million dollar winner in 2011. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.